Hey everyone, welcome to JM Lectures. We are tackling the seventh unit of grade 11 physics, equilibrium. And the question, question number 12, is as follows. Which of the following is a correct statement about the first condition of equilibrium? Okay, so it's just literally asking us the definition, basically, of the first condition of equilibrium. So equilibrium is a very interesting concept and mostly it has to do with balance, okay? Well, in thinking about balance, you might sometimes assume that it means that the body is not moving or in perfect stillness. But a body in motion can also be in equilibrium, as long as it satisfies two conditions, okay? The first condition of equilibrium, the first condition states that, let's write the second condition as well. So we have two conditions for equilibrium, the first and the second condition. The first condition states that the summation of all forces acting on that body must be equal to zero. Okay. The second condition, the second condition, fairly similar, says that summation of all torques acting on the body must be equal to zero. Okay. I'm not saying that the forces themselves or the torques themselves must be zero. I'm saying when you add all the forces and add all the torques, they must be zero. Okay. Maybe to see this more graphically, if we have some object like so. And let's consider the first condition, for example. And I have something that's pulling it this way with a force of 2 Newton. And I have something that's pulling it this way also with a force of 2 Newton. Okay, This body's in equilibrium because I have 2 Newtons pulling it this way, 2 Newtons pulling it this way. Those forces cancel out. The forces themselves aren't zero, but the summation of the forces would be equal to 0 Newton. So that would suffice the first condition. If I'm talking about the second condition of equilibrium, let's consider something like a seesaw, right? So we have a seesaw like this, okay? If we have a seesaw like this, which means it can, it can turn either this way or that way, let's consider the clockwise and anti-clockwise motion, okay? So let's consider that somebody, our kid, is sitting down here, pushing it down with a force of 10 Newton, right? So if this is the only force acting on the seesaw, it will turn, which is what which is what torque is. It's the, the, the rotational force basically acting on a body. So this would turn it in the clockwise direction. But let's say I have an equally heavy kid here also with a force of 10 Newton, okay? And that would turn it back in the, con in the counter clockwise direction. So the 10 Newton and the 10 Newton on the other side would balance out this force, making it in equilibrium, okay? So again, the question though is asking us about the first condition. So the first condition of equilibrium would be this concept right here. The summation of all forces will be equal to zero, okay? It could be that the forces themselves are zero, but that's aren't, is, that isn't the only condition. Like if no force is acting on the body, yeah, the, for, the object will be in equilibrium. But the summation of forces acting on the body could also make that body be in equilibrium if that summation is equal to zero. So anyway, let's look at our choices here. We see the first choice says the net force of an object must be zero. Yes, that is our first condition of equilibrium. Net force, uh, this concept right here, summation of forces is the same as saying net force, right? Or basically the resultant force you have once you add up all of these forces together, okay? If you don't know how to add forces in order to check the resultants, check out my video on grade 9 physics about vectors, which really help you understand how to add and subtract forces, okay? Well, look at the second choice here. The sum of all torques must be zero. That is true, but that isn't our first condition. That is our second condition of equilibrium. So you see, um, so you see reading, if you read that question too quickly, you might think there are multiple answers, but if you read the question, it's asking us about the first condition. Not which one is true, but was true about the first condition. Even looking at choice C, we see that clockwise moments should, plan should balance counterclockwise moments. Moments is another wor word to relate to torque, right? So that is also true. In this case, for example, we saw that the clockwise moment balances the counterclockwise moment. That is also true, but it has to do with the second condition. Again, Choice D says the torque produced by a force should be perpendicular to the force. That is also true, but it's again a definition of torque. It has nothing to do with the first condition of equilibrium. All it's saying is that if you have a force in this direction, it's the right hand rule, if you have a force in this direction and radius in this direction, torque will be perpendicular to the force. I don't know if I can show this on camera, but um, since the definition of a torque, since the definition of torque is the radius cross product with the force, uh, torque is perpendicular to both the radius and the force. So that's what choice D is saying, but this doesn't have much to do with the second condition 
of equilibrium, let alone the first condition of equilibrium, which is the question. Anyway, you see how all of the choices are true, but not all of them are appropriate for this question. So anyway, that would be choice D. I mean, sorry. So anyway, the answer would be choice A, that the net forces of an object must be zero. And that's it. All right, so now we're moving on to the next question of equilibrium, question number 13, and it says the following. From the figures below, which one is in equilibrium? Okay, so I'm gonna have to give you the choices in order to answer this question, but let's just see the choices we have here. Um, let me have, give me a minute to redraw these figures, actually. All right, so these are our four bodies that we have there here. I kind of enlarged them a little bit, but this is our choice A, and this is B, this is C, and this is D, right? So um, it is asking us about which of the following is in equilibrium, and we just saw in the previous question what the conditions of equilibrium are. We have to check, first of all, if the summation of forces are equal to zero, and second of all, if the summation of torques are equal to zero. So let's do that for each, okay? So in this case, let us look at, let's start with choice B, <laughs> okay? So let's start with choice B first. So for choice B, let's first talk about the summation of the forces, okay? So we have an upwards force of 2F, whatever unit of, whatever F represents, it's some unit of force I'm assuming. So 2F in the upwards direction and 2F in the downwards direction. So obviously they're in opposite directions, they're equal and opposite, so they'll cancel each other out. So that suffices the first condition of equilibrium. What about the second condition of equilibrium? What about the summation of the torques? Okay, so let's look at these two forces individually. This 2F will cause this body to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, right? This 2F will cause it to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, whatever the amount is. And this 2F will also cause it to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So if they're both rotating counterclockwise, this object will start spinning. And obviously, the summation of the torques will not be equal to zero, or this body would not be in equilibrium. Uh, the unit of torque being newton meter, right? So that's it. It doesn't matter if the summation of forces of zero are zero. It doesn't matter if the summation of forces are zero newton. Both conditions have to be satisfied. And since the second condition isn't satisfied, this body is not in equilibrium. Let's look at choice C that we have here. Let's start again with the first condition. What are the summation of forces? Well, we have one F here, one F here. So in the upwards direction, we have two Fs. In the downwards direction, we also have two Fs. So again, the first condition is satisfied. What about the second condition? What about the summation of forces? Oh, I'm sorry, what about the summation of torques? Well, let's look again. Let's just take consider this central point right here, okay? So if we consider this central point right here, this F will again cause it to rotate in the clockwise direction, right? So this F will cause it to rotate in the clockwise direction like so, right? This 2F will also cause it to rotate in the, oh, I'm sorry, in the counterclockwise direction. I think I've been saying clockwise all this time. Anyway, this F causes it, causes it to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, but the point still remains the same. The 2F also causes it to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So if they're both rotating in the counterclockwise, bleh, if they're both rotating it in the counterclockwise direction, again, the summation of, 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 of torques can't be equal to zero Newton. I should have used the same color. The summation of torques, again, can't be equal to zero Newton meters. Right, so um, there's this F here, but uh, this is a concept about finding the moments. This F cross, if I'm considering this central point right here, this F crosses this central point. So this doesn't really have any effect on the moment, right? It's you have to consider this force here and this force here. Anyway, let's move on to, the quest, to choice D and see if we can check whether this object is in equilibrium. Again, we check the first point, what are the summation of forces? Well, if we see here, we have one F downwards and 2F downwards. Both of these downward forces can be summed up to have a downward force of 3F, right? We can consider a downward force of 3F. And here we have an upwards force of 3F. So again, they cancel each other out. They have a force of zero Newtons. Well, what about the torque, okay? What about the summation of torque, okay? Again, let's consider some central point somewhere over here, right? So in this central point, since this force crosses the central point, we don't have to consider this force. So let's consider these two forces. What effect do these two forces have? Well, this force is turning it in the clockwise direction, right? 
this force is turning it, I should probably use my black color over here. So this force is turning this body in the clockwise direction. So this is the moment or the torque by this force right here. And this force is turning it in the counterclockwise direction, okay? So luckily enough, this is better than these other two choices when there's actually a clockwise and counterclockwise direction. There's actually a clockwise and a counterclockwise direction. So this is the clockwise and this is the counterclockwise direction, right? So there's actually two moments in opposite directions, but that isn't what torque, that isn't what equilibrium is about. It's not about the existence of torque, it's about that these two torques must cancel out each other. But we see here that the torque in the clockwise direction supplied by this force right here is a force of 1F. And the force in the counterclockwise direction, which we have here, is a force of 2Fs, okay? So their distance is equal, right? This has a radius of r, this also has a radius of r, but the forces are not equal, okay? Because the formula for torque, I should probably, I should have mentioned this or earlier, the formula for torque is radius crossed with the force, right? So we have to consider the radius and the forces acting on the body. So we see the two have equal radiuses. This one's pushing in the clockwise direction. This is pushing it in the counterclockwise direction, but the forces are not equal, okay? So once more, these this will create a zero, this will not create a zero Newton meter torque, okay? Because it'll be different from zero. This will turn, it will turn more in the counterclockwise direction than in the clockwise direction, okay? So this gives you a general understanding of how to find the summation of forces and the summation of torques, okay? So obviously we can see that none of these are in equilibrium. That would make choice A in equilibrium, but we can also prove it in the same way, okay? Let's check the summation of forces. Let's check the first condition of equilibrium. We have two forces acting upwards, two forces acting downwards. So again, that will give you a total of zero newton. The two forces will cancel out each other, okay? What about the rotation or what about the summation of the torque, okay? Is there any torque acting on this body? Well, these two points, if you look at them here, they are what you call concurrent, okay? And concurrent points don't form a moment, okay? So if you look at this here, I'm pulling it this way and I'm pulling it this way. There is no rotation that is happening. Even if I consider this point here, if this even attempts to pull it in this direction, this will pull it in the opposite direction. Or similar, a simpler way to understand it is that these two forces are concurrent. And concurrent forces acting on the same line don't form any moment, okay? So the torque or the moments will be equal to zero Newton meters. So choice A, the reason why I skipped it <laughs> is because choice A is the correct answer. All right, you might have been shocked in realizing that for all four bodies, the first condition is sufficed. All four bodies have a summation of forces equal to zero Newton. And that is why it's key to understand the second condition as well in order to see which one is truly in equilibrium. So again, we see that choice A is our correct answer. And that's it.